organizational skill tests are typically given to the candidate to determine their effectiveness at the workplace. Questions asked on this test attempt to put candidate into challenging work situation where a candidate needs to determine the right course of action. Very frequently, as part of the test, candidate may need to be able to demonstrate the basic knowledge of the work items management as well. Organizational skills are important today since companies benefit when workers can perform effectively under tight deadlines, prioritize daily tasks, and be enabled to collaborate effectively with others. In this video, I'll share with you some examples of the questions we frequently see on the test. You can also use this test to just learn and improve your organizational skills. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's a very interesting question to determine how well you can work with others. You need to determine what is the best way to schedule a meeting with the client who is based in a different time zone and has limited availability. You need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, schedule the meeting without considering the client's time zone. Choice B, email the client with several date and time options without specifying the time zone. Choice C. Check the client's time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. And last but not least, choice D. Schedule the meeting during your manager's preferred time slot without considering the client's availability or time zone. Take a close look to see if you can select the right answer. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice C. Option C is the best choice because it takes into consideration the client's availability and time zone. There are two stakeholders in this action, your manager and your client. And you need to check the time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. This will ensure that the meeting is scheduled at a convenient time for both parties and this minimizes the risk of confusion and miscommunication. Let's also look at other options to determine why they might be incorrect. Let's look at option A. It is wrong because it ignores the client's time zone, which will lead to scheduling conflicts. Option B is also incorrect because it does not specify the time zone, which can cause confusion and miscommunication. And last but not least, option D is incorrect as well because it disregards the client's availability and time zone, which can lead to scheduling conflicts and damage the company's reputation. When you solved this challenge on your own, did you come up with a different answer? If this is the case, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's the very interesting question to determine your personality. You just arrived at the corporate event. You do not see anyone you know there. What would you do? You need to select all that apply out of the four different choices. Choice A. Observe others. Wait for people you know to arrive. Choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Choice C. Temporarily leave the event and come back later. Choice D. Check your itinerary to ensure you are at the right place. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right answer. So you can always pause this video to determine the answer that you would want to choose. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to answer and have different recommendations, feel free to share in comments. I believe that in this question, you are being tested on whether you are a good team player. Work environments are very collaborative and companies are looking to hire people that work well with others. There are no easy ways to determine if a candidate is a good team player. For example, recruiters do not screen for quality candidates, but mostly focus on technical skills and try to submit as many candidates as possible to increase their chances. More than 50% of resumes contain lies. Non-team players hype their resumes to look like A players. Questions on behavioral interview are not very revealing. References checks are generally worthless. This is why companies ask questions on the test that might help them to determine the right candidate. During the assessment tests, companies look for essential traits for the team players. They typically look if the candidate is social, if candidates adapts easily to difficult situations, 
if candidate tackles challenges with enthusiasm and whether potential employee is a creative problem solver. They also look for the red flags, and typically red flags are that the candidate likes working solo, doesn't take initiative, and maintains a status quo. Obviously, with these types of questions, there is no right or wrong answer, but there is a least recommended answer which you can spot based on the red flags. Because red flags are that the candidate doesn't take initiative, afraid of unfamiliar situations, and passively maintains status quo, the choices to avoid might be choice A, observe others and wait for people you know to arrive, or choice C, temporarily leave the event and then come back later. Based on what we know, organizations are looking to hire people that are team players, that can introduce themselves and feel comfortable and confident in unfamiliar settings. One thing to keep in mind is that you always want to be honest and answer how you would behave. But you also need to understand that your behavior is unpredictable until you're actually in this particular situation. Are you sure you will never behave as the best version of yourself? Can you become intentional and be courageous even if you feel uncomfortable about the situation? Keep in mind that you can also change yourself and behave as a team player. Considering that team player traits are being social, being easily adaptable, and being creative problem solver, the most recommended answer here is choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Do you have a better version on how to answer this question? Please make sure to share in comments. So what are the key areas tested as part of organizational skill test? I recommend you focus on five. Your ability to set short-term and long-term goals, as well as build tasks based on these goals, is very important. Number two, ability to organize digital environment using web-based and mobile tools used in the workplace is essential for your success. Number three is ability to let you stay focused on different tasks to achieve results and avoid burnout. Number four, ability to use your time effectively to accomplish the goals. And last but not least, number five is ability to coach others to achieve the desired outcomes on the project or company's efforts. Have you seen any other skills tested as part of organizational skill assessment test? Please make sure to share your observations in comments. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question to test how you would behave. You are working on the project with other team members, which needs to be completed in the next nine days. After re-estimating, you realize that you're in danger of missing the deadline. What would you do next? And you have five choices to select from, and you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. You decide to work on the weekend to make up for the lost time. Choice B. You mention your concerns as a first discussion item during the next team meeting. Choice C. You will approach project manager and discuss with her to see if your calculations are correct. Choice D. You prioritize finding a project team member responsible for the delay. And last but not least, choice E, you review project plan to determine other tasks that might be delayed as well. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. But obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, since the answer is not obvious, please make sure to post it in comments. I believe that the key trait tested as part of this question is transparency, and specifically transparency when working on the project. What is transparency? Transparency when working on the project is defined as a trait of collaborating with others in an open way without the secrets, which means working together as a group where all team members can access all relevant information about the project easily and efficiently. It also means publicizing and making additional information available and sharing your concerns as they become known. What's interesting about this question is that this question is about you. And this question is about how you would behave when you're part of the group. You have two choices. One of your choices is to demonstrate transparency and review additional information with the team. Or you can use the information you uncovered to hide the delay and find someone who might be responsible. Success of the team is essential for your own success. Your concerns about missing the deadline might be accurate, or they just might be a result of your miscalculation. 
The best idea is to validate your concerns and to share them with other team members as well as project manager. Even if you personally responsible for the delay, if you bring your concerns early enough, they could be addressed and you can still meet the deadline as a team. I believe that there are three important traits tested as part of this question. Transparency, communication under pressure of deadline, and courage of bringing unpopular information for the discussion. There are also some red flags that this question helps uncover. It can test your character for potential sneakiness. This question detects if you prioritize finding someone to blame for project delays and non-disclosing valuable information to the team in a timely manner. Considering this, the worst choice to answer is choice D. You prioritize finding a project team member responsible for the delay. Choices E and A are also not recommended, and the main reason is because it's not clear if project is truly delayed. It is always better to have an open discussion before trying course correction. Based on this, my recommended choices are choices B and C. And the reason I selected these choices is because transparency during the discussion of items strategic to the project success benefits the project manager and the team members and sets an example of open discussions on any issues that might affect project's progress. This type of precedence also allows the team to trust each other better and work together more effectively. So my recommended choices are choice B. You mentioned your concerns as a first discussion item during the next team meeting and choice C, you approach project manager and discuss with her to see if your calculations are accurate. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post your answers and rationale in comments. Here's a very interesting question to test your customer service skills. You work as a retail associate at the New Wave store, which is part of a large global chain. Customer browses the selection of clothing items and looks very frustrated and dissatisfied. She approaches you and after you check on the computer, you can't find the item she is looking for inside the store. What would you do next? And you're presented with four choices and you need to select all that apply. Choice A. Offer to place an order at New Wave online website. Choice B. Apologize that item is unavailable and suggest to try Amazon.com or another retailer. Choice C. Mention to the customer that there were supply chain shortages everywhere now. And then last but not least, choice D, call to the store manager to discuss the situation with frustrated customer. Interesting question, don't you think? Take a close look to see if you need to pause this video to come up with the solution. Are you ready? On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please educate us and share your solution in comments. I believe this question is designed to validate your ability to handle a conflict and turn things around. The key of successfully resolving the conflict is ability to collaborate with the customer and focus on the solution. Main objective of the interaction is to listen to the customer, understand what customer is trying to do, and try to be genuinely helpful. There are three best practices. Number one, always project how can I help you attitude. Number two, take responsibilities for the issues. And number three, avoid arguing and escalations. I believe there are three essential traits this question is looking for in the candidate. Focus on the solution, project helpful attitude, and avoid escalations. There are also red flags that question is trying to pinpoint. Number one, lack of responsibility, and number two, searching for excuses. Considering this, choices D and C are the least recommended choices to answer. Let's look at choice D. Call to the store manager to discuss the situation with frustrating customer. This is the worst one to select trying to resolve the situation because it takes away time from the manager and shows you inability to handle a conflict and resolve the situation. I also suggest that you do not select choice C. Mention to the customer that there are supply chain shortages everywhere else now. Your role as retail associate is not to focus on excuses but find the solution to the customer. Based on this, I believe that the best choices here are choices A and B. Choice A offer to place an order at New Wave online website. And choice B, apologize that book is unavailable and suggest to try Amazon.com or another retailer.
It is the key to make customer feel happy and appreciated by focusing on the solution and trying to be sincerely helpful. By offering these two choices, you show that you do not just trying to make a profit, but also able to offer outside solutions, for example, using Amazon.com retailer. In addition, ability to resolve conflict yourself and keeping customer happy without escalations to the manager is also extremely helpful skill. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post your ideas in comments so we can all learn. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question which tests unusual traits and doesn't have very obvious answer. John works as a manager at a large company. Recently, John was asked by his boss to sign a contract with a local business who is run by John's longtime friend, but who previously had issues with the law. What should John do? And there are four choices to choose from. John should sign the contract. It will be a productive relationship since he knows the owner. Choice B. John should use his friendship and ask local business owner to give special discount to his employer to establish a long-term partnership. Choice C. John should work with legal department to add protective clause into legal language of the contract. And last but not least, choice D, John should report potential conflict of interest to his superiors and ask for the advice. Do you see the answer? What's interesting about these types of questions is that you need to select all that apply. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you concepts that are tested as part of this test. And obviously this is just my opinion. If you have different thought process, please make sure to share your solutions and choices in comments. I think this question is designed to test the candidate for the concept of conflict of interest. In this question, John has a conflict of interest with his employer. Conflict of interest is when someone's personal obligation or loyalties clash with their duties in the workplace. This is how it works. John's friendship compromises his ability to make impartial decisions, judgments, or actions that serve the best interests of his employer. In addition, John's friend, company owner, had issues with the law in the past, and some industries in some countries, for example financial industries in the United States, may require company to disclose such relationship to the government. John has an established friendship with the local business owner, but at the same time he represents large company as a decision-making manager. Most organizations have policies in place to disclose conflict of interest for employees and managers. Let's look at three main reasons why disclosure is so important in the workplace for the company. Number one, organization needs to have all the information to make decisions. Number two, disclosing conflict of interest ensures interests of employers are protected. And number three, it reduces legal problems. I think there are four important characteristics and traits that are tested as part of this question. Number one, understanding laws and regulations. Number two, understanding company's compliance policies. Number three, understanding and disclosing conflict of interest to employer. And number four, asking question if there is a misunderstanding or lack of clarity. In addition, based on the answers that candidate selects, these are the red flags that this question might disclose. Number one, lack of objectivity. Number two, looking for inappropriate favors. Number three, manipulative or controlling behavior. Number four, inability to resolve conflict of interest. And number five, a lack of emotional intelligence. Based on this information, I would recommend you avoid choices A, B, and C. Let's look at each one of them individually. Choice A, John should sign the contract. It will be productive relationship since he knows the owner. The fact that it might be productive relationship is true, but this does not provide employer with all the information needed to make a decision. And there might be challenges in the future in this relationship. Another choice to avoid is choice B. John should use his friendship and ask local business owner to give him special discount to his employer to establish a long-term partnership. Even though this choice seems like a favor to the company, this shows manipulative behavior and hiding some information. Let's look at why should we avoid choice C. John should work with legal department to add protective clause into legal language of the contract. 
there shouldn't be any additional protective clauses here if John discloses all the information and all of his relationship, including conflict of interest. Based on this information, the correct answer here is choice D. John should report potential conflict of interest to his superior and ask for the advice. This choice shows John's humility, discloses conflict of interest, and complies with laws and regulations. Compliance is a formal process in most organizations to address conflict of interest, and the disclosure process is intended to help the workforce to be transparent and accountable for their actions and decisions. Disclosure of potential conflict of interest does not make it an actual conflict, but may help eliminate the perception. What do you think about this question? Do you have a different thought process? Please make sure to share your solution in comments. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.